Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. Brace yourself for today's episode. In today's world of electric drills, um, I frequently find it inconvenient either to recharge the battery or to get a long enough extension cord for wherever it is that I want to use the drill. On the other hand, if I use my free electric tools, my various braces, I can do all kinds of things. So I just want to show you a few examples of how varied the use of a brace can be. Here's a piece of wood and I want to make a hole in the middle of it. Well, one of the first things that happens is if I take a little pointed tool and I make a hole right here, that will give me a place to start boring with whatever kind of drill bit I use. Here are three different size little gimbals. And these all have little lead screws and then they have a little cutting edge to them. So we can try using the small one first. It fits in the hole and then I turn it around and the screw part feeds the tool into the wood. And then as soon as it's down to a certain depth, it starts to make a hole and you can see the wood coming out. And I can do that with three different sizes. Then I can take my brace and I typically have two braces in my tool chest. And you'll notice that they have bigger and smaller arms. That's called the sweep. The bigger the sweep, the more effort or the, the brace exerts on the hole. But I only want a rel relatively small hole here, so I'm going to use the small sweep brace. And I'm going to take just a regular auger bit here, and I'll fit that in the end of the brace. Tighten up the chuck. And then this also has a little thread in the middle of it, but it'll fit into the hole that I've made already. And it will help guide the auger bit into the end of the wood. And you'll notice that I'm standing with my head resting on the handle to give myself a little extra pressure. So that's one simple way of making a hole. One simple use of the common or garden brace. But what are all these other braces here? Well, here's an example of a brace that has a rather peculiar looking thing on the end of it. And what that will do is to ream out the sides of the hole so that I now have a little countersunk hole. I do this. You'll see that I now will make myself a nice little chamfered hole, depending on how long I do it and how much I press. But now, for whatever reason I might want it, I now have a little countersunk hole. I can do the opposite thing. I can put in the vise a small piece of wood that I might need to use as a pin in a a pinned mortise and tenon joint or a dowel joint or something like that and because the end is perfectly square it might be a little difficult but with this brace and the little bit that I have at the end of it I can chamfer the sides of the hole I simply put this on here like this once again press and very easily, very quickly, it sharpens or chamfers the end of the bit. Now, these come in different sizes. Here's a, a similar bit, but of a much larger size. So I can put this in here, tighten it up, and if I've got a much larger piece of wood, like this piece here, I can do the same thing. Mm. 
a little squeaky, but there's no extra charge for the squeak. And you see that also, if I were to continue, would make a nice chamfered edge. Here is yet another kind of device that you can put into a brace. I keep this one permanently fixed. And this is simply a flank screwdriver with a square tang that fits into the brace. And I've sawn out, I've filed out the middle of the edge of the blade. And what this gives me is a saw nut remover. Here is a quality 100 year old saw. And you'll tell that you'll know that it's a, a quality saw because it has the remains of the little nib at the end here. It has four nice screws. It has a lamb's tongue handle. Looks a bit old, but it's a really good quality saw. If I wanted, for whatever reason, to take the blade out of the handle, I would need to unscrew these. But the bolt that comes through from the other side very often protrudes through the nut. So I need a screwdriver that has a hole that will allow that. So if I put this on here, and I turn this, I'm able to loosen the nut, and I'll take it all the way out so you can see what I'm talking about. And you can see in here the nut from the other side. A regular screwdriver like this wouldn't have done that because the nut would have been in the way. I've got one other thing to show you, and that is the reverse of the holes. Let's start off by making a hole in the end of this piece of wood, just like I showed you before. So we'll start with a little pin here. And we'll put that in the center. And in another episode, I'll show you how to get holes perfectly centered. And then I'll put the little gimbal in here to enlarge this so that I've got a good starting hole. And you can see how the thread pulls the tool into the wood and makes a nice starting hole. And then using an appropriately sized auger bit, I put that in here and I'll bore a hole in the middle of this. Now I get to use either of these tools. And what these tools do is to make the hole larger in a nice tapered fashion. And that's good for a whole variety of different joints. Put that in so it's secure. Tighten it up. Oops, you need to get a little looser. There it goes. There it goes. Tighten that up. And now, if you watch carefully, I put this in the hole, use my head as pressure, and I can do this. And pretty soon, I will have reamed out a nice little, little hollow in there that's good for all sorts of other little joints. These are just some of the things that you can do with braces, whether they have small sweeps, whether they have large sweeps, whether they're old-fashioned ones or really old ones like this. And for common or garden purposes, the most typical bit that I use is called an auger bit. There is one other thing that I am going to show you in a later episode, and that is how you can make a tenon on the end of a round piece of wood. And that's made with something that's called something similar to what these are. That's called a hollow auger. And you'll see there are different size holes in here that correspond to the different size auger bits in here. 
and you put this over the end of the wood and what it does is to create a nice tenon on the end of a round piece of wood it's pretty easy to put a tenon on the end of a square piece of wood but it's a different matter to put a tenon on the end of a round piece of wood but that's something that you need to do when you get into making chairs so that was a brief introduction to some of the many things that you can do with a regular brace that are a little difficult if not outright inconvenient to an electric drill i hope you like that i hope you come back to see the hollow auger in action and many other hand woodworking tool things that we can do uh, and so that you don't forget don't don't you know forget to press the uh, subscribe button and, and the like and uh, i'm happy to answer your questions so off you go and have a good time Oh,